بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الصادق الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Indeed, all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the sustainer, and the controller of all that happens in the universe. And we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, the truthful, the trustworthy one, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have some happy news. Uh, last week, I believe on Wednesday, we made dua for a brother who told us that his brother was going to surgery. And the brother told me today, just now, that his brother, mashallah, had the surgery and it went well and he's out of surgery and he's recovering well. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless the brother and protect him and to grant him a speedy recovery, inshallah. The other thing is, I know that for the past few weeks, perhaps almost for the entire month of January so far, and even sometime in December, we've been under a very cold spell. Uh, but according to the weather folks, tomorrow things should be a lot better. So as Allah says, in فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْأُسْرِ يُسْرًا إِنَّ مَعَ الْأُسْرِ يُسْرًا that with difficulties, there will be ease. And so that ease will come insha'Allah. And this is for us two brothers and sisters. It's, it's actually an opportunity that Allah gives to us. You know, these fluctuations in life that we face. These are chances for us to recognize and appreciate the bounties and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we, when we get the ease, we can appreciate the mercy of Allah uh, for giving us ease and we can also appreciate the, the easy times that we have so that when we're faced with hard times we are patient or more patient and steadfast. Now what I would like to cover today for the past few sessions we've been talking about the life of Isa alayhi salam and we talked about the birth of his mother Maryam alayhi salam and the fact that with her birth and her upbringing and even her own pregnancy with uh, Isa alayhi salam, <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the world that a woman is as capable as a man of serving him. And then there's the birth of Isa alayhi salam, this great messenger of Allah <clears throat> whose birth is miraculous. And there are many events that unfolded in his life that are also miraculous. And then finally, when people plotted to kill him and to harm him, Allah the Exalted saved him in the miraculous man. <clears throat> now the last issue here is that the Ahmadis or the Qadianis as we know them, believe that Isa alayhi salam died. They believe that after Allah saved him, he died. And I heard, I don't know how true this is, that uh, they claim he was buried somewhere in Kashmir. So the question is, what does the Qur'an have to say? Or if there is nothing specific in the Qur'an, what is the Islamic perspective, the correct perspective on whether Isa alayhi salam has died or is still alive? Now, the Ahmadis use two ayats in the Qur'an. One of them in Surah Al-Imran and the other in Surah Al-Ma'idah towards the end. In Surah Al-Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَافِعُكَ عِلَيْهِ In the, the problem or the issue is surrounding the word mutawaffika. As the ayah is in uh, Surah Ali Imran, Allah says, and remember when Allah says, Ya Isa, O Isa, inni mutawaffika wa rafi'uka ilay. The word mutawaffi or tawaffa, mutawaffi comes from the verb tawaffa, which has two meanings. 
in Arabic language. One of them is to die or to cause to die. So if the word mutawaffi mean, comes from the verb that means to die or to cause to die, then the expression inni mutawaffika would mean surely I will cause you to die. Warafi'uka ilay. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah in his tafsir mentions that some scholars say that in this statement there is what is known in, in Balagha in Arabic language as a taqdeem wa ta'khir. In Arabic language, sometimes in, 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 in using certain expressions, it is quite acceptable that a person may change around the order of events. So some scholars say that the ayah really means inni rafi'uka ilayya wa mutawafika, that I will raise you up to me. This is how he was saying. Isa alayhi salam, and after that you will, I will cause you to die. <clears throat> so that's one meaning of the word mutawaffi. The other meaning is to cause someone to fall asleep. So it can mean to cause to die or to fall asleep. And Allah has used the word in the Quran to mean to sleep. Allah says, Allahu alladhi yatawaffa al-anfusa hina mawtiha wallati lam tamut fi manamiha. Allah says, He is the one who causes the souls to die and those that do not die in their sleep. That is, He causes them to fall into sleep. So the word tawaffa, the verb, has these two meanings. And of course, the, the Ahmadis, they take the one meaning which means to die. And so they use this as proof that Allah has said in the Quran that to Isa alayhi salam that he will cause him to die. <clears throat> so he has died. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah discussed this in his, in his uh, tafsir. And he talked about the various opinions of the scholars. And then he said, but the view of the majority, waqawlul akthar, the view of the majority of scholars is that the word mutawaffi here in the ayah means cause you to sleep. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up, he was not wide awake. Isa alayhi salam was not wide awake, conscious of what's happening around him. Allah caused him to fall into a sleep. And in that state, Allah raised him up. And to, best of our, uh, to the best of our knowledge, based on the Quran and Sunnah, because there's nothing specific, Isa alayhi salam is probably in the same state of, of sleeping until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send him back down. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah argues that Isa alayhi salam has not died because we know from the authentic sunnah that he will be returned to the earth. He was raised up from, a, from the midst of the people when they plotted to kill him and he was raised up alive so he did not die at that time. The Quran makes that clear. وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا They haven't killed him, period. And how he escaped was that Allah removed him from the midst of the people. He raised him up. بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ So we know that he was raised up. So he, was, he hasn't died. And we know that he will be com coming back because he hasn't died. And as a human being, he has to live the rest of his life and then he will die as every human being must die. In fact, every creation will perish. Nothing will stay forever. Allah says, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Everything on it, meaning on the earth or in, in, the, in creation, will vanish. فَانْ It will come to an end. It will come to an end. And the only thing that will remain forever and doesn't end, وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ And the, to literally translate the face of your Lord and the Mufassirun say that the use of one part of the body implies the whole being. So basically the ayah means, but your Lord shall remain. ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ The possessor of, of majesty and, and glory. So Isa alayhi salam will die, but he will only die after the coming back. 
after he is sent back after his descent. In this, the Prophet والسلام, in the authentic hadith has mentioned as one of the signs, one of the major signs, that the hour is very near. The day of judgment is close. In the ahadith, the Prophet والسلام, mentioned 10 signs that are considered 10 major signs. And major here refers to the fact that they indicate that the hour is quite near. Because there are signs that are considered minor signs. Signs that indicate the hour is coming and somewhat near, but not imminently near. But these ten signs are the signs that will mark. And they will happen in a certain order. One will lead to the next. And that will lead right into the, the establishment of the hour itself. The first sign would be the appearance of the Mahdi. <coughs> and the job or the mandate of the Mahdi is to prepare the Muslims to receive Isa alayhi salam and the leadership that he will bring. And then soon after the Mahdi appears, the Dajjal will also appear. And the Dajjal will, of course, travel around the world and uh, create more confusion and doubts in, in the minds of people. And then the third sign is that Isa alayhi salam would descend. According to the hadith, he will descend in the Masjid al Jami' in, in Damascus, in Syria. And I know as we speak, uh, the country of Syria is in very bad shape. Many masajid have already been destroyed. And not just the masjid, but even the infrastructure in the country in terms of roads and buildings and so on. But nevertheless, according to the hadith, Isa alayhi salam will descend at the same age that he was raised up from amongst the midst of people. And it would be at Salat al-Fajr time, just as the people are about to pray Fajr. And the angels, the Prophet says, will bring him down, like angels carrying him. And they will put him on the minaret of the masjid and he will walk down into the masjid. And when he comes into the, the, the jama'ah, the Mahdi will offer him to leave the salah. And he will refuse. He would say to them, this is a, an honor that Allah has given specifically to the ummah of Muhammad. That they are the leaders. He will not be the leader. He will pray behind the Mahdi. And after that, he will assume some leadership uh, of the Muslims based on the injunctions of the Quran. When Isa alayhi salam comes back, he's not coming back as a prophet and messenger with his own sharia, the Injil, no, or revelation, the Injil. He is coming back and he will have no choice but to follow. The final revelation, the Qur'an. Because the Qur'an abrogated everything else before it. So when he comes back, he has no choice now. But to follow the orders of the Qur'an. And his main mission, once he comes back, is to, is to follow the Dajjal. To go after Dajjal because he is the one who has to slay the Dajjal. He has to kill Dajjal. And he would kill him, he would find him as the Dajjal, as he's trying to enter one of the doors into the city of Jerusalem. And Isa alayhi salam will find him there, will pursue him and find him there and, and kill him. And so that would put an end to the fitna of the Dajjal. And then Ya'juj and Ma'juj will appear. And they will of course create severe mischief in the land. And Isa alayhi salam will tell the, the Muslims, don't even, don't even try fighting them. There are too many to fight. But instead he will tell them to take refuge in the mountains. Similarly to what happened in Mecca when Abraha came to destroy the Kaaba. Abdul Muttalib, the Prophet's grandfather, told the people of Mecca, leave their homes and take refuge in the mountains. 
And the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah would send a flock of birds that would drop on the Ya'juj and Ma'juj, pebbles, just like they did on Abraha and his army. And that's how Ya'juj and Ma'juj will be destroyed. People will not find them. They will not have the capacity to fight such a large number of people. And then after that, Allah, the Prophet says, Allah will cause rain to fall to sort of wash away and cleanse the earth. And then vegetation will grow anew. And then there will be a period of affluence and wealth and peace in the world. Peace because the Prophet said in the hadith, when Isa alayhi salam comes back, one of the main uh, objectives of his coming back is that he will slaughter the pig and he will break the cross. The same cross that the Christians very uh, uh, venerate and they hold in high esteem. It's a symbol of, of sacredness. He will break the cross because he was never crucified on that cross, uh, as the Quran said. And in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَإِن مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِ Allah says there is none among the people of the book. When Jesus comes back, alayhi salam, there is none amongst them except that they will believe in Jesus. They will believe in the truth about him. Now there is confusion and doubts. He was killed on the cross. He wasn't killed on the cross. He is the son of God. He is not God. He's, and so on. But when Jesus comes back, he will clear all these misconceptions, misconceptions and uh, uh, incorrect belief that people have. So Allah says that there is none from the people of the book because they have the doubts. As Muslims, we have no doubts that he is not the son of God. He is not God. He is not part God. He doesn't have divine qualities. We are not confused, the Muslims. We are sure that he wasn't killed. He wasn't nailed on the cross or anything like that. So we have no confusion about this, but it's they who have. And Allah says there is none amongst them except that they will believe in the truth because now the man is here in person. I mean, the most one a person can do is to claim, hey, you are not Jesus, you're somebody else. You're an imposter claiming to be Isa. So this is why he has not died yet. Because he will come back. Allah has his plan for him. And so the word used in the ayah, mutawafika, and in the other ayah in Surah uh, Al-Ma'idah, towards the end, uh, Isa alayhi salam says to Allah, wa kuntu shaheedan alayhim ma dumtu fihim. I was a witness over them while I was alive with them. So before he was raised up, he was a witness over the people. He was a messenger of Allah and he uh, was witnessing what they were doing, good or bad. Then he said, فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِ But when you, and the word, the word tawaffa is used here. When you cause me to sleep, or when you cause me to die, right? These are the two meanings of the word. Ibn Kathir mentions in his tafsir here, that the Mufassirun say, فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي means when you raise me up, cause me to fall asleep and raise me up, and took me away from them. كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِمْ You were the one who was overseeing what they were doing. I have no knowledge of that now. So once Isa alayhi salam was raised up, he had no knowledge of what the people did after him. But he says to Allah, أَنْ كُنْتَ أَنْتَ الرَّقِيبَ عَلَيْهِمْ You were the one who was overseeing it. You were the raqib, the one keeping a watch over them. So you know best, O oh Lord, what they were up to after you raised me. And so the correct opinion, based on the unanimous agreement of the, the scholars of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, is that Isa alayhi salam never died. He will die, yes. But so far he hasn't died. Allah caused him to fall asleep and then raised him up from the midst of people. And perhaps he's in that same state of sleeping until Allah will send him back down when Allah decides the time is right for that. And he has certain things he will do. And then he will die a natural death just like everyone else. This, as Ibn Kathir said, is the, is the correct opinion of the, the scholars or the people of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. 
And so the claim of the Ahmadi is that he died already because of these two words in the ayah. This claim uh, is, is, is incorrect. Although the word can have that meaning, because remember, right, you might wonder, well, if the word can carry that meaning of dying, of, of death, why is their interpretation wrong? Well, the reason it's wrong is that we understand the Quran based on the understanding of the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba and the early Muslims. And the Prophet ﷺ, based on the ahadith, for example, the ahadith about the, the, the signs of the hour and the descent of Isa alayhi salam, the Prophet ﷺ understood that he never died alayhi salam. That is, Isa alayhi salam never died. And the Sahaba had the same understanding. So we understand the Quran based on the understanding of the Prophet ﷺ because it was his mission to explain to us the revelation sent to us. So that's how we can tell that th that interpretation that Tawafa Mihir means to die or to cause to die is not correct. Unless, of course, that was the understanding of the Prophet. So I just wanted to clear, to clarify this position uh, so that this discussion on Isa alayhi uh, salam is quite clear in the minds of us. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. Yes, brother. Yes. Uh, did the Prophet say clearly that the Prophet Jesus did not die? Uh, the question is, did the Prophet say in a hadith, Jesus did not die? Yeah. I have not come across any such hadith. I don't uh, claim to have read all the hadith. Yeah. Uh, but to my knowledge, I have never come across any hadith in which he actually said Jesus did not die. Yeah. I'm saying, perhaps there is no need to say Jesus did not die. Because in the other hadith in which the Prophet والسلام, talked about the coming back of Isa, the, the understanding or the implication is he hasn't died. Or else, here is the issue. If he had died, then it would mean that for him to come back, he has to be resurrected, recreated. And as far as we know, once a person dies, there is no resurrection, there is no coming back until the judgment. Where we will be recreated and given life anew for the judgment, not for anything else. So if we assume he has died, then we also have to say, well, hey, you know what? He's going to be re brought back alive and then sent back to the earth to do these things. Unless, of course, somebody feels that he died and he's not coming back. Then you have a problem with all these authentic ahadith that talk about his coming back. In fact, even Christians, brothers and sisters, even Christians believe that he's coming back. They believe he's coming back. And, but they believe that when he comes back, he's coming back as God. And of course, as Muslims, we believe he's coming back, but not as God, because he was never God. He was never part God. He was never even the Son of God. He's coming back as a human being. And of course, when he comes back, then the truth will become clear. Hopefully, the truth will become clear. You know, people still have the habit of, even when they look at the truth, to, to make excuses and to try to find ways and means of not accepting it. So who knows, when he actually comes back, there may still be people who claim you're an imposter, you're not the real Jesus, you're somebody else. But nevertheless, when he comes back, as the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, he will, he will slaughter the pigs and he will break the cross. So this sign of veneration in Christianity, I mean, this is probably the, the, the most eloquent way of letting people know, look, this cross has no meaning. He was never nailed on the cross. He was never crucified, never died. It has no meaning in Christianity. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Yes? Okay, it seems like you missed some of the sessions. The Quran says in verse 157 of Surah Al Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ They did not kill him, they did not crucify him. So the people at that time never apprehended Isa alayhi salam and nailed him to the cross. Allah says it wasn't Isa. Obviously it was somebody else. Because the people did apprehend somebody. They did arrest somebody. On top of that, that somebody must have looked very much like Isa. Or else they would know they've apprehended the wrong man. So it must mean that that person looked very much like Isa. 
or else they would know that they had gotten the wrong person. But they never realized that. They always thought that they had captured the right person, Isa. But the Quran says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَا لَهُ They did not kill him, they did not crucify him. شُبِّهَا لَهُ دَعُودَ لَمِينَ إِنَّهُ وَحَدْ تَانِي لِنْصَرَ بَدَانُهُ أَوْ لِلْقَاتِلِ إِنَّهُ شُبِّهَا لَهُ مِنَّ مَقْتِينَ شُبِّهَا لَهُ دَمِينَ تَعُودَ Okay, when Allah said it was made to appear to them, what exactly was made to appear to them? It appeared to the people that they captured Jesus, alayhi salam, the messenger of Allah, and that that is the person they nailed on the cross, and eventually he died. When Allah said it was made to appear to them like that, so they did believe that it was Isa on the cross. Allah says, وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ though They never put him on the cross. So it had to be somebody else. And that somebody else must have looked just like him. Or else people would know, this is not Jesus. We didn't kill him. But the, the people who, who supposedly killed him, they actually believe that they did kill him. Then Allah explains this. Allah says, look, they don't have sure knowledge. مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ They're not sure about what happened. إِلَّا اتِّبَاعَ الظَّنِ they, they, don't, they don't have sure knowledge. All they do is they're, they're doing guesswork. Ittiba' al Assumptions. Then Allah says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا And of a surety, they did not kill him. What happened? If they didn't kill him or capture him, Allah says, بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ Rather, Allah raised him up to himself. And as we saw in the other ayah, he caused him to fall asleep and, and raised him. Okay. So this is what happened. So I hope that, you know, this would uh, clarify for us as Muslims the Qur'anic perspective on the life of this great and noble messenger of Allah, Isa alayhi salam. Excuse me. As I said at the beginning of this discussion uh, last week or the week before, at the very least, the Muslim should know with, with surety what is his or her position from the Islamic perspective on Isa alayhi salam. At the very least, I as a Muslim should not be doubtful or confused about what the Quran or what Islam has to say about Isa. I as a Muslim should be sure of this. And then, you know, we can deal with uh, other people's perspective on this. So that's why I decided to, uh, to talk about this issue in details, given the fact that also uh, a few weeks ago was, you know, the Christmas season in, in the world and uh, everybody was uh, about Christmas and about uh, supposedly celebrating the birth of Isa alayhi <coughs> salam. And so I thought that it would be important for us as Muslims, at the very least, to know and to understand the truth from the Islamic perspective about Isa alayhi salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message He has revealed from mankind. And may He inspire us all to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to be among those who love and rever all His messengers and all His prophets. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Raise us all up on the day of judgment and the company of his noble prophets and messengers. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.